Listening to Mix Delirium with Mons DJ and Julian Lennon in conversation with Mark Thompson Ashworth. itself, broke, and swept a thin veil of white water across the sand. The wave paused and then drew out again, sighing like a sleeper whose breath comes and goes unconsciously. Gradually, the dark bar on the horizon became clear, as if the sediment in an old wine bottle had sunk and left the glass green. Behind it, too, the sky cleared as if the white sediment there had sunk, and flat bars of white, green, and yellow spread across the sky, like the blades of a fan. The mist morphed into a haze, one incandescence which lifted the weight of the woolen grey sky and turned it to a million atoms of soft blue. The light struck upon the trees in the garden, making one leaf transparent, and then the other, the sun sharpened the walls of the house and rested its shadow upon a white blind and made a blue fingerprint, but all within was dim and unsubstantial.
misty and grey, isn't it? A day for reading Virginia Woolf and disappearing into the waves. God, what should I do with myself? I don't want to talk, but I want to listen. And yes, maybe talk then, but it needs to be riveting before I listen.
OK, what's riveting to you? I can talk to you about monsters and gods and sex. My favourite pasta recipe and the film I saw last night and the one before. You pick your choice.
I might want to talk about women. But women are boring. They start out all sparkly and irresistible and then drown in repetition, desperation, tears and accusations. They want me strong when they're weak and then weak when they're strong to mould me. Why do women always want to mould, hold, fold, be told? When I need to breathe, they suffocate me. Yeah, guess they say the same about us, word for word. Stop moaning. You could start the next chapter in your book. Keeps your mind from drifting.
But I need to drift before I get an idea, before I see beauty in my mind. And you stop telling me what to do. You have it your way, I have it my way. No way then. Dead end. Cul-de-sac. Let's have a glass of wine. We cloud our thoughts. We just say what comes to mind. Let's talk about Monet. The diaphanous obsession. About the mystery woman that will never appear. The altar of candles we build for her. The fascination of impossibly slim ankles, the curve of her collarbone, the strand of golden hair that doesn't escape my attention.
Yes, let's not forget about my unfinished work, the bills accumulating, the house in disrepair, the fear, the boredom, the endless. Enough. I will hear no more.
it's clearing up. Let's go for a walk. I need my head to quieten. Actually, I liked the sound of the diaphanous obsession. It'll cling to my mind, a gauze thought, the tip of a veil, like the mist lifting over the lake, sunbeams playing with their shadows. Yes, it's a lovely vision, a gentle, transparent vision. I never needed that glass of wine after all. Just two words that paint my mind to create a lightness that rushes through my veins. Look, the breeze blows beautiful blue shapes into the clouds. Diaphanous obsession. Isn't that what it's all about? A fascination with the unseen, the mysterious, the longed for, the imagined. Wings to carry one through the day. Let's return to the house. I feel we just lifted the tip of the sky. The wind painted the obsession, diaphanous clouds, as far as I can see. DJ and Julian Lennon in conversation with Mark Thompson Ashworth. Thank you for listening.